phone? Yeah. Back of the phone? Glasses. <laughs> People say you're brave for showing mistakes on video. I say you're brave for wearing those on video. <laughs> What's the word with this? Misfire. Cylinder one. Misfiring on cylinder number one. And we did a compression test. They have 120 pounds. We've got 140 on a different bank, a different one, but the range was like 120 to 150 was the range they wanted. So you're low. Huh? You're it's low. It's low, but I mean, it's like a, and it's it's more of a, at an idle. You know, when you rev it up, <clears> man, it <throat> kind of smooths out. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, which is compression typically. Yeah, and we have really good spark. We switched the spark plugs around. Oh, you did? Cool. Switch to, I didn't switch any wires, but I have a good... And you said you it. put you put an inject... Uh, I put a fuel switch pressure gauge on. Okay, you switched plugs. You had real good spark. You yeah. checked spark jump, and then yeah. you also flow tested the one inject. Yeah, number. but not like you would do it. I just like, yeah. turned it on. I had like 40 pounds. We grounded it, and it went down five pounds, you know, but yeah. I don't know if it's... It's flowing. Going, yeah. It's not, yeah, it's not like dead. This says, please select Chrysler CCD connector. Otherwise, you may, maybe you cannot test the ABS or ORC module. I remember that message. So we're just doing the engine, though. We might have a false fuel tank level code. The Autel gets a little funny with some of these older Chryslers. Injector one control circuit. That would be Danner. Cylinder one misfire. Park neutral switch stuck in park or in gear. Transmission fault present. Read DTCs. Okay, I'm not worried about tranny fault. We're attacking a misfire. Don't like the exhaust leaks. I can hear it. Short term, long term doesn't look bad, but the minus, minus numbers can be uh, indicative of compression. You hear that fancy word I just said? Trans temp is minus 40. I don't care about that. I like the data list on um, the snap one so much better. Where's my misfire counters? Live data, trouble codes, it should be under active tests. Fuel injectors I can short, coil I can, I can control, but it's just a single coil. I don't see misfire counters. One twenty you had on compression, huh? You said one twenty on this one and then like one forty on one next to it? I'm gonna unplug this coil. Yeah, but that's static though. We're not seeing it actually under yeah. operating, you know? Yeah, I never had luck that Well, it just has to do with speed. It has to do with the speed and velocity of the air and fuel but coming in and out of the cylinders. It's always like lower, isn't it? Yes, yep. Yep, because there's more time for the cylinder to fill when you're cranking than there is when you're idling. Yeah, especially if you have a valve that's not opening the whole way or something. Yeah, but I mean, just as a, in a natural state, you're gonna have higher compression because there's more time for the yeah. cylinder to fill yeah. as opposed to idle. And then when you have valve issues, you can have good static compression, but while it's running, yeah. it's, it's not. Yeah. It's not like, I don't know how to describe it. I'm sorry, I'm kind of left with it's not. I'm just doing a cranking uh, test here. I have the coil unplugged, just want to listen to it. You can hear it. Let's, uh, this will be my first RC test with the Autel. So let's see what we can do. RC test, do I have amp clamps? Did I not get amp clamps with this? Well, that's lame. I thought I, this at least came with an amp clamp. I guess, I guess it didn't. We can do an RC test, relative compression, and look at voltage on the battery. Those are just, I found those to be noisy. What is the easiest way to do this? These are BNC connectors. Um, I do not have my Pico with me. Okay, I'm just gonna work with what I have. If you guys have one of these kits, 
This will be an alternative way to do a relative compression test is we're just gonna go right to the battery. We'll do a little bit of filtering, maybe some AC coupling. I'll explain what that is here in a second to uh, see that what this pattern looks like. And if we have, if this ends up being mechanical, that's as far as we're going. Danner's not gonna be doing any mechanical work with this. All I wanna do is identify that yes, in fact, we have a compression problem in the number one cylinder. Just go into the battery with these, just need battery voltage. As current flow to the starter changes, so does voltage on the system. So as we see the current humps, voltage will be opposite. As current rises, voltage drops. So the, the arc, if you'd see the two lines, this one would be going high and this one would be going low. And then they would go like this, and then they would go like opposite of each other, right? Voltage is gonna drop as amperage rises. So we can use the same thing, the same concept, just looking at battery voltage. That's what I'm attempting to show here on the Autel. Okay, so 12 volt line, and what we wanna do is we wanna set up a longer time base. So first thing I wanna do is that. Let's increase our time base to 500 milliseconds per division. That gives me a five second screen. And then the other thing we wanna do with channel A is, if it lets me, is I want to pick AC. When you pick AC for a scope, Danner, you could do this with yours too, man. Yeah, AC couple of scope. So if I'm on DC, when you're on a lab scope and you see like, you see your 12 volt line. So I wanna see those little humps in there and you really can't because if I drop this down, so I'm on a 20, if I drop it down to 10, it's off the screen and yeah. I, can't, I can't see it. I mean, I guess I could pull it down. Let's see how much this lets me do that. I really wanna be on a one volt, but the problem with that is it's just not accurate. I don't know why it's even reading there over range. Anyway, you can't do it. Point is you can't do yeah. it. That's just kind of weird how that's, I guess it stays red because it's over range. This is different than a scope I've used before, but so what you do is you, I really want to be on a one volt, but to be on, yeah. so you pick AC and what that does is that blocks all the DC constant. And then you can set your AC voltage down to one volt and then we'll see real nice rip, uh, okay. ripple there. Neat. So AC, when you, like on a DC on a lab scope, it draws both AC and DC content, okay. but in AC mode, it blocks all constant voltage. So then that's the test and then we crank it and see what we got. It's there, so let's do, yeah, two volts and then maybe, maybe a little bit of a filter here. Kind of clean that up a little bit. Too much time, noisy as hell. 200 milliseconds. There we go, low pass filter. So voltage, it's gonna be opposite. We can see it though. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, oh, maybe. I hate using battery voltage for this test. I really do. I'm gonna take this again with a little bit higher setting here with this low pass filter now It'd activated. Be if you just made a video about what it's like when you need front brakes. <laughs> and when there's nothing left. There, there is nothing there, that's for sure. There's really nothing else you need to do other than make sure the piston goes back. <laughs> and the sliders are clean. <laughs> that's what I, what I feel like we should be doing right now. It's what, about what all we're qualified to do. You can hear it as I go. You hear it get worse as I crank it? Well, the battery's getting weak too, but that one cylinder, we have to look at this opposite. I hate this. There's your low cylinder. Here, come here. I'd like to invert this. It'd be nice if I could invert it. Can I invert this? See, all I have to do, I don't have to invert anything. I just have to flick this little switch and then it goes <laughs> clockwise. <laughs> here, look at the pattern. We have a compression problem. If you'd like, I'll sync it with an ignition pattern and we'll prove it's the number one. Number one. Yeah. The screen, with the, when you look at voltage, you have to invert that it. That one there. Yes. So you see it when we're inverted. And Caleb, in your edits, you can do that. Voltage, remember when current rises, voltage drops. So higher current mm -hmm. is a larger voltage drop. The reason 
that this the one one good cylinder no no that's actually what happens here is when you have a low one like this uh -huh. because of that low cylinder the next draw will be higher for the next cylinder over it has to do with air airflow and just accept it okay sure. anytime you have a low one a low one the very next one's going to be higher okay. and so what you're seeing here and this this high one here is the same one as here yeah, and what you're seeing is it, a, a gradual decline on each of those that's all good like so this downward slope is because of this it's because of that low cylinder. And then the next one's high, and then you have that downward. So these are actually all good in here. That one is not. Okay. That one might be a little bit low next to it, but definitely that one. And you count your cylinders, that's, we'll go, we'll, we'll start from here, count that one as one, mm -hmm. two, three, four, five, six, back to one. Mm -hmm. It's the same, this is a compression problem. Okay. And, and I mean, I told the camera and our crew here, I'm not going, uh, pressure transducer and in cylinder and I don't we don't care we're not doing any engine repairs to this this is identifying to the customer correct we're not doing engine work well I mean he wants to get through emissions I think there's some other codes I can deal with you know but I mean, I mean we're not doing if he wants engine work done to this you're not doing it no, correct no, right but I apologize I don't have all my pressure transducer stuff with me today I got my auto I don't have my pico I'm not doing it um, we're just gonna sync this we'll do one other piece with this I just want to prove that that's the number one. And you guys can see a relative compression test can be done at the battery without an amp clamp. You saw what I did. I AC coupled it and then I filtered it to make it look like that. Um, one last piece. I'm going to pull in a second channel and then I'm going to sink off of the number one cylinder. So that means I have to restore spark and then I'll unplug the injectors because that's real easy to do on this to keep it from starting. So injectors are all unplugged. I'm gonna plug this coil back in so I have spark because we need spark to be taking place. And then I'm gonna grab a sync signal off this number one plug wire. And we'll use a secondary ignition pickup. And this will just give me, every time that spark plug wire sends spark down to the number one cylinder, we'll have a little blip on the screen. And that'll be our number one cylinder sink. So I'll put that on channel B on the scope. And then I'll run this, turn on channel B, tell my scope what I'm using. Secondary ignition probe ignition. We'll set that to, uh, I don't know, minus three to 10 kV. And then we crank it. Injectors are all unplugged, keeping the vehicle from starting. Got a little fuel left over. Battery's just about dead, sorry. Let's go back a couple frames. I should have inverted this. Here you go, Danner, come here. There's your number one. The big, the big green spikes your number one. Okay. So that's definitely your, you see that matches yep. exactly. Yeah. I should have inverted the waveform, but those other impulses are just feedback, you yeah, know? for sure. But your big spike is your number one. And, it lines and there's up. your number one again. Okay. You, we have low compression, number okay. one cylinder. So just to rehash for you guys. <laughs> Danner. You think this is some kind of gar garage or something. I'm trying to film here. This ain't about fixing cars. Just final wrap up here for you guys with lab scopes. If you don't have an amp clamp, it can be done again at the battery when you're doing relative compression testing. Um, right there, just going to the battery for, for that. These, these two leads are channel one, right? Both of those go into channel one. Channel two go into a plug wire to synchronize your waveform. That was our setup. AC coupling the lab scope was key to knowing how to set a filter. Guys, I'll put a couple uh, links in the description of this video and probably in the cards, a little eye icon, depending on the device you're using to watch the video on some other uh, lab scope type settings that you want to learn. Uh, the ones I'm thinking of are my piece, uh, Pico Scope Basics 1 and 2 videos. I'll put them in here. Uh, this was the Autel um, example of doing a, an RC test and hope you guys learned something. Low compression, reason we're not going any further is Number one, my brother's not doing the repairs, engine mechanical. Number two, 
is I don't have any pressure transducers or anything with me today. So this is as far as we go. Uh, number one cylinder, low compression, matches the symptoms, runs good higher RPMs and under load, come down to an idle, and then we have a misfire that's very, very typical valve issues symptom-wise uh, when you have something like that. So hope you guys learned something. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.